Yeah. 
Museum, Chuck Mahat, Tan Kushaman, Sa Apolox Domok Sna, Lanakila, Kanaka Sna, Bob Baker, driver's license. <clears throat> Honored to be here and feel very, very um, honored to be with you at this moment in life and uh, celebrating this, this part, this station that we're at at the moment. It's uh, a wonderful occasion and I'd like to offer up a little bit of a, a blessing. It could be called a prayer, it could be called, you know, anything, but uh, it is a blessing coming from our ancestors and I'm going to sing a song. The song is uh, called Tum Tum Slolom in the Squamish language, translates to Snowbird. And it is a song that comes from the swans when they come back and return to the territory. It is a uh, signal that things are gonna change. This song represents that. It represents change. It represents that time when things are gonna change and they're gonna get better. So we sing a song for the medicine that will allow us to accomplish this without having any mishaps, accomplishing it in a good way. Song comes from one of our lady ancestors who had difficulty getting around, had trouble walking, but if you can imagine our longhouse, which holds a thousand people uh, with the earth floor and two open fires, when the families got up and sang for her, she was able to bypass her disabilities and she was able to dance. So this is uh, that medicine, which allows us to have that, we call it snomp, that power from the creator to accomplish things. Remembering that we should give that back to the creator when we're done. But uh, just wanted to share a little bit of the background of this song. And uh, Snowbird is the English translation, but not the Anne Murray version. It's the one that came a little bit later. And so um, we thank you for that. And we also would remind you that during this song, if there are some people that you'd like to send some of your medicine to, this is the time to do it. And uh, this is in that form. It is a spiritual uh, effort and comes from a very sacred place, uh, from our longhouses. So, Enjoy on hot tamakutsi, and if there's anybody having trouble standing, you may sit because we're just as close to the creator sitting down as we are standing up. So we encourage you to um, be comfortable. Oh, see him. One part I forgot. One part I forgot. Is this working? Okay. One part I forgot was to welcome you to the territory. I always forget that you're you're already here, so it's like I kind of figured you're already welcome. So uh, <clears throat> welcome to the territory, OCM. We are Squamish, and we are connected with uh, Slewitooth and uh, Hamasquim, with uh, blood ties, family ties, and so we represent all of these families here, welcoming you here in the fashion that our ancestors would do, the way that we're taught to do, sharing our protocol, our chiach, and our snop, our medicine. We'll see him. Whoa! 
Thank you, Eagle Song dancers from Squamish Nation for leading today's procession and to Elder Bob Baker for those words of welcome. And you can be seated. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brad O'Hara. I'm the Executive Dean of Adler University's Vancouver campus, and it is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to welcome all of you, family, friends of the Adler community, and our graduates. Uh, Ms. Ninu Kang, who will address our graduates later today, our faculty, administration, staff, and trustees of the university, and all other distinguished guests. And I too would like to acknowledge with respect the history, customs, and cultures of the Coast Salish territories, including Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh, upon which we have the privilege of living and working and on whose unceded lands we're gathered today. At this time, I'd like to introduce the members of our platform party. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced and please stand when I call your name. Dr. Raymond Crossman, President of Adler University. Ninu Kang, Executive Director, Ending Violence Association of British Columbia and today's commencement speaker. Dr. Janine Diddle Uzi, Vice President of Academic Affairs. Thomas O'Shaughnessy, Trustee. Dr. Sandra Song, Program Director, Master of Public Policy and Administration. Dr. Sean Ireland, Program Director, Master and Master of Arts in Industrial and Organizational Psychology. Dr. Katura Welton, Program Director, Master of Counseling Psychology, Art Therapy. Dr. Asa Sophia Malio, Program Director, Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology and Master of Counseling Psychology. And Dr. Manal Gurgis Younger, Program Director, Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology. And our esteemed faculty, Dr. Renu Renuga Nagarajan, Dr. Diljat Kaur Soin, Dr. Hisu Jinni Jum, Dr. Benjamin Aiken, Dr. Debbie Clellan, Dr. Eric Jensen, Dr. Samaya Mohammadi, Dr. Jillian Smith, Dr. Damon Elgi, Dr. Nardine Awadala, Dr. Francois Bota, Sinead Nugent, Michael Smith, Dr. Nicole Dorfin, Dr. Janelle Kui, Dr. Johnson Ma, and Dr. Amir Asafari. Please join me in welcoming our platform party. And please be seated, platform party. To help us celebrate and recognize the fine achievements of our talented graduates, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Raymond Crossman, President of Adler University. Thank you, Brad. I'm so excited to be with y'all today. Um, my colleagues are, and I are excited to join you and your family and your friends to celebrate your accomplishments. Today, we celebrate your successful journey through graduate school. We celebrate your continuing journey of learning, scholarship, service, and growth as we welcome you into the disciplines of counseling psychology, industrial and organizational psychology, counseling art therapy, clinical psychology, and public policy and administration. You're completing graduate school during an extraordinary time in history. Uh, for this city, for this province, for this country, for our planet. So many opportunities and challenges to meet. Um, it's also uh, quite an extraordinary time at Adler University. Um, this fall marks our 70th anniversary as an institution, advancing social justice and preparing the change makers of tomorrow. We started in 1952, founded on a single idea, that idea, the graduates here can say, Gemeinschaftsgefühl, what that means for those of you who are not the graduates is loosely translated as social interest, but it means the idea that our health is embedded in our community life. It's a powerful idea that is so necessary right now for the planet. So to be an Adlerian, an Adlerian University graduate, a socially responsible practitioner is to be an effective agent of personal and social change in the pursuit of social justice. 
Congratulations, graduates, on answering this call to action, and congratulations on your achievements. Thank you, Ray. Today we celebrate on many levels. First, this class of 2022 consists of 123 Adlerians, our second largest graduating class to date in Vancouver. We're also celebrating the fact that, although we held a commencement last year in this facility, two members of the class of 2021 who were not able to attend at that time due to the havoc wrecked upon the Lower Mainland due to rainstorms, flooding, and landslides have joined us today. We also celebrate and welcome a student from our online campus who hails from Armstrong, British Columbia, and will receive a doctorate later this afternoon. And finally, we celebrate because in addition to the several hundred of you in attendance here today, we are live streaming today's event for those who could not travel to the Orpheum Theater this afternoon. So I extend a warm welcome to all of you wherever you may be. Each year at commencement, a member of the graduating class is invited to address their fellow students in celebration of their important achievements. And this year's graduate speaker is Nigel Mojica, who will be receiving his Master of Counseling Psychology degree later today. Prior to attending Adler, Nigel graduated from Simon Fraser University with a Bachelor of Arts in English and Communications. And at Adler, in addition to being outstanding in the classroom, Nigel served as a student representative on the Anti-Racism Committee of the Board of Trustees and was an important member of the Adler Student Association's organizing committee, uh, which formed a Bridging the Gap pilot program. Nigel is also talented outside of the classroom. He's an active rapper and previously served as a radio host. And prior to arriving at Adler, Nigel spent 10 years doing frontline mental health work in the downtown east side and elsewhere around the Lower Mainland. So it's no wonder that one faculty member referred to Nigel as a superstar. But perhaps Nigel is best summed up by one of his fellow classmates who called Nigel a variety show for all he does in and around his community. He confesses to being a good person, friend, son, partner, community member, and now counselor, and is excited about bringing his full self to the counseling profession and practice in a way that would make his mother, his ancestors, and his late friend Alex proud. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and, and family, please welcome Nigel Mojica. Thank you, Dr. O'Hara, for that very warm and generous and somewhat unexpected introduction. <laughs> um, and good afternoon. Good afternoon, fellow graduates, family and friends, staff and faculty, and everyone who couldn't be here but is here with us in spirit or via the live stream. Uh, it's a real honor for me to address you all on this special, special day. Uh, all of these people who are going to walk across the stage today are different people than they were when we started here at Adler. And honestly, that much was expected. But what perhaps we didn't anticipate was how different of a world we would be stepping out into than the one that we started in. My own cohort spent two terms in person before moving on to Zoom. Um, and other colleagues in March of 2020, and other colleagues here started their degrees online, some moving to BC from other provinces and other countries just to go to school here, uh, only to end up doing so from their apartments. A lot has happened. You know, we've seen each other's bedrooms. You know, we've looked at ourselves a lot, literally and figuratively. And we have shut our cameras off to just kind of stare into nothingness for a little bit. I know you all know what I'm talking about. And uh, in one way or another, I think we were all brought to terms with just how differently things can go uh, than how we expect them to. And there are positive examples of this, I want to note. Um, 
In the latter half of my own studies, I felt like the portrait of everything not to do as a student. I struggled with deadlines, I was wildly disorganized, and I communicated these challenges poorly, if at all. Uh, and now, not only did I manage to graduate, but they are allowing me to speak at the ceremony. So <laughs> anything's possible, I guess. Hey. <laughs> um, so two things I've learned. Uh, one is that our actions really do matter. And two, they don't necessarily always matter in the ways we think they will. Uh, my own failures, for instance, which I was so focused on at the time, didn't end up meaning as much as I thought they would. And how many of us in the counseling program, for instance, have used intervention after intervention only to learn from our clients that what was most impactful for them was the way we listened? And how much course content have I forgotten, sorry, um, and yet held on so tightly to a passing comment from an instructor who said to me, you know, I think your problem is actually not asking for help when you need it. So I'm starting to think we're actually pretty poor at predicting the specific impacts of our actions, yet I've never been more sure that our actions have impacts. And now here we are, right? At the end of a long and eventful road of trials, having overcome both internal and external obstacles, graduating into a world that, like us, is in transition. A new phase of the pandemic, the widespread losses of trust in the systems and institutions that once held our world together, the precipice of a climate catastrophe that threatens all of our basic survival, and all of the complex moral questions that come with such uncertainty. For us as a society, right? To open up and unmask in hopes of bringing back some lost sense of social connection, knowing it imperils the disabled and immunocompromised in our communities. For institutions like Adler to uphold its rules and policies in the spirit of fairness, or to honor its students' unique needs, even when that means bending the rules. Frankly, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for some of my instructors, shall we say, flexible interpretation of assignment deadlines. <laughs> so I am grateful. And of course for us as graduates to move into careers that we no doubt hope will bring us prosperity while also recognizing that succeeding within systems that perpetuate violence, dominance, and inequality is in a way no success at all. How do we maintain a balance as helpers between being the comforting spoonful of sugar and the bitter medicine of change. Is this not uplifting enough? <laughs> I'm proud of us, I am, I really am, and I can feel how proud our loved ones are and our ancestors too, but even more than that, I believe in us, in the power we all have to shape the world in ways we can't necessarily even see or imagine. Each one of you has impacted my path whether or not we've met. This is our interconnected nature as people, as members of a community, and as living beings on this planet. I believe that the kindness we show to each other and to the earth is kindness we show to ourselves and vice versa. So I invite my fellow graduates and anybody else who would like to now to take a moment and reflect what it was that brought you to your work. You know, the hopes that you had for that journey and for this career and for your lives. Has it been what you expected so far? Friends, I hope you can look back on all you've done and learned here at Adler with pride and satisfaction and look to the future with hope and revolutionary love and stand dignified in the here and now in what my therapist calls the adult present of your life. Before leaving, I just wanna say some names. Masa Amini, Nika Shakarami, Serena Esmailzadeh. These children died at the hands of a dictatorship in Iran where the Iranian people in a movement led by women and girls are risking their lives to demand their freedom. And I guess a hope I have for all of us is that we can show even a fraction of their courage and lend our energy to theirs. and to the fight for liberation of all oppressed people in this world. 
My fellow graduates, it is a privilege to be your colleague, and I wish you all joy, peace, and strength as we move into this next chapter. Thank you, and congratulations. And Nigel, I wish you all the best in your next chapter, and thank you for your thoughtful, timely, and powerful address. You're a wonderful representative of today's graduating class, a strong, socially responsible practitioner, and your contributions to Adler University are greatly appreciated, so thank you very much. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Janine Diddle Uzi, Adler's new Vice President for Academic Affairs. Thank you, Brad. Just move these down a little bit. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted to be with you today to celebrate what is my very first Adler University commencement exercises alongside these fabulous, fabulous graduates represented by um, an amazing, powerful speaker and spirit, and alongside their communities of support who are represented on stage and also in the audience. I know you didn't do it alone, graduates, so, so thank you all for being here um, and for welcoming me into this community. It is my great pleasure this afternoon to introduce today's commencement speaker, Ninu Kang, a longtime community leader on issues such as immigrant and refugee resettlement, youth gang violence, violence against women and children, anti-racism, and coalition building. Ninu Kang is the executive director of the Ending Violence Association of British Columbia, also known as EVABC. EVABC coordinates and supports the work of victim serving and, un and other anti violence programs around the province. Prior to her current position, Kang served in several leadership roles at Mosaic, a nonprofit organization that serves immigrant, refugee, migrant, and mainstream communities in Greater Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. Along the way, she enhanced women's safety by creating unique support services, as well as the first men's domestic violence treatment program for immigrants in Canada, which she helped expand across the country. She is one of the founding members of the Punjabi Women's Association and a founding member of the South Asian Community Coalition Against, Against Youth Violence. While at Mosaic, she led the Surrey Organizing Racism and Hate Network to facilitate dialogue to establish best practices, raise public awareness about racism and hate activities, and also to develop response strategies to address these incidents in Surrey. This past spring, EVABC, at EVABC, Ninu served as part of a witness panel on intimate partner and domestic violence in Canada for the House Commons Standing Committee on the Status of Women, where she spoke to the importance of engaging boys and men in national strategy to end, to end gender-based violence. It is no wonder that Ninu has received many accolades for her work, including the Surrey Board of Trade's Women in Business Award, the challenge coin from the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit, and the Nehru Humanitarian Award. All of this combined with the fact that Ninu draws inspiration in her work from the young people who are the future of change, all of you socially responsible practitioners who are about to walk across this stage today, indicates that we have selected the ideal person to serve as Adler University's 2022 commencement speaker. We are truly honored that she has agreed to join us today. So please help me welcome this year's commencement speaker, Ninu Kang. Thank you so much, Janine. I just want to know that that introduction you gave isn't part of cutting into my 10 minutes of the speech. All right, okay, I still have my 10 minutes. Wow, I mean, thank you so much for that um, introduction. I think if I was smart, I would just exit the room and just leave it at that. Um, thank you so much. Um, let me see if I can move this because I'm getting a little glare here. 
Um, I want to take this opportunity. I know that it's uh, possible that Elder Baker and his team has left, but for the wonderful opening and welcoming us to their ancestral lands. I'm a settler on these lands, and I remain committed to learning about the truth and um, committed to figuring out what reconciliation work I can do. President Crossman, members of the board, executive um, dean, Brad O'Hara, Adler administrators, faculty, staff, guests, but most importantly, the beautiful grads sitting right here. I want you to just look at your right, look at your left, the grads, and say hello. I know you have, but also congratulate each other. As I was starting to put my um, speaking notes together, I asked myself, what have I done in my life that would make me worthy of this honor? I think of myself as rather an ordinary person. Then I thought, surely there would be some nuggets from my rather ordinary story that could, ins that could be inspirational for new graduates as they embark upon the new chapter of their life. Then I thought, well, I could just share myself. And I could just tell you my story. And usually that works pretty well. My friends, my name is Ninu Kang. I was born in India in a small rural village in Rajasthan in the mid 60s. My parents moved to Canada for a better life for their children. And I'm having a struggle with this reflecting, so I'm gonna pull it out. All right, thank you. I started schooling here when I was 10 years old and learned the English language for the first time. In the 70s, there was overt racism against immigrants of color. So social slurs, name calling, being pushed on the playground and sometimes being spat on was rather common. And the boys actually had it harder than the girls. We were taught European history in schools. We did not learn about the first peoples of these lands, nor about our colonial past. After university, when I started looking for a job, I knew I wanted to do something that had to do with my community. I didn't know what the job would be and I didn't know how I would get there, but I started volunteering. I joined a women's organization, not one, but three. I uh, joined a youth group and I started uh, community organizing. It started to become clear for me why I was doing what I was doing. I, could, I became more clear about my why. I landed my first job in a settlement organization and I worked there for 30 years advancing equity for women and other peoples who are pushed in the margins of our society. My story of a young immigrant girl is very similar to probably many of you here in the audience. It's rather an ordinary story. Graduates, you also have a story. In addition to everything else that you bring to the table, the most important thing for now is for you to understand your why. Who are you in this work? Why are you doing this work? I would argue that you know your why. You just have to become more clear about it and then start telling it to others. In the past few months, I've had some major events in my life, including my daughter's wedding. Yes, a big fat Indian wedding. The whole nine yards lasted more than a week. At the same time, my mother was struggling with her illness and passed away soon after the wedding. 
These two major events in my life reminded me that this is what life and living is about. The yin yang in life, a Chinese philosophical concept that describes opposite factors which are interconnected. For some, for some, sorry, we never anticipated the little thing that would happen with my eyes and the, and the paper, but for some, um, the wedding of my daughter and the passing of my mother um, are interconnected, and they sure are. This is the dynamic relationship between beginnings and endings. Ordinarily, these major types of event in one's life could really take you off your track. But knowing my why, remembering that I am who I am, it's because of my mother, and that I do what I do because I want to make the world a little bit better for my daughter. This makes me more energized than ever. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> Graduates, the work you will do will not always be easy. I lost my why once. In 2006, Manjeet Bengali was killed by her husband and burnt to conceal the evidence followed by a series of South Asian women who were killed at the hands of their husbands. I remember I was asked to speak as an expert on the media on issues of domestic violence in the South Asian community. I couldn't do it. I was ready to quit. At that time, I had worked with hundreds of South Asian men providing psychoeducational treatment helping them address their use of intimate partner violence. I thought all these men who I had worked with for more than 15 years, I thought they all let me down. I started to question the effectiveness of my work in treating men. That was the time when I tapped into my resources for myself, I needed to call friends, and I did. I needed to call colleagues, and I did. I needed to tell them what was going on for me, what I was feeling, and what was gonna happen if I didn't get support. I was the caregiver who needed care. And lucky for me, my friends and my colleagues were there for me, and I got back on track. Graduates, this is your big day. We are gathered here to acknowledge the years of hard work. You must be proud. I know we are proud of you. From here today, I want you to disperse. I hope that some of you will go to work in the community, some in the healthcare system, maybe the justice system, Maybe the government, maybe elected officials in the government, maybe with the Ministry of Children and Families, or other places. We need you to spread out and enter the very system that have the history and practices that can traumatize and re-traumatize the very people you are setting out to serve you will walk alongside and support individuals, one person at a time, on their healing journey. You will do this by providing one-to-one -one support. You will do this by providing group work and education seminars. This, my friends, is not enough. You will get tired more and more Clients will keep coming. Paul Kibble, an American educator and an activist 
who works with men that have used violence, describes the work as a tree. He says that if you are only supporting one survivor, one perpetrator at a time, you are merely just trimming the tree. What happens to a tree when you prune the branches? The branches get greener and the tree gets stronger. He argues that if you want to get rid of the violence, you have to attack the roots. You, my Adlerian friends, know this all too well. Mobilizing the community, challenging social norms that are oppressive, changing policies and practices of the institutions and systems that re-traumatize that they are supposed to help. This work, my friends, is attacking the roots. Some of you will march in the streets and some of you will march into the offices of decision makers and work alongside with them to make changes that are needed. All of you will do something because that is what you are taking away from the Adler University. You have a heavy backpack on your back. You have put lots of tools in it over the years. In this backpack, you have theories, concepts, frameworks, learnings from your instructors and your peers. It is heavy. I suggest you take it off and maybe put it somewhere in that office you're going to be working or and maybe for now just in a closet at home. I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a gift of three tools that my mother gave me a long time ago. You can put them in a small bag, you know, one of those bags that have the strap, you know, that you can't lose and that won't fall. These three tools, my friends, are love, care, and compassion. You need them every day. You will need to use love, care, and compassion first and foremost for yourself. You will need love, care, and compassion with those you serve and support. And finally, you'll need love, care, and compassion with those who don't agree with you. We are at an important time in human history. A line has been drawn. We are asked to take sides. What side of the history will you choose? You have chosen the side of energizing communities and advancing social justice. Dr. Martin Luther King says, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. This means that you have work to do. You cannot be complacent and you cannot be silent. You cannot be merely just a bystander. Graduating class of 2020, congratulations. You have work to do. Let's get to it. What a fabulous charge to our graduates. I greatly appreciate it, and I know the graduates do as well. Um, you're very Adlerian, um, and that's uh, very fortunate because what we're going to do right now um, is recognize your work. And you know, your work to advocate for immigrants and for refugees, for men and for women in different ways, and your longstanding work related to anti violence is a model and an inspiration to us all. It's consistent with the dream of Alfred Adler um, and of our founders and indeed all of us who've chosen Adler University as our professional and educational home. Uh, this is a place that's a harbor in which justice is advanced uh, through our collaboration with one another and the world, the kind of collaboration that you do every day. I know your passion for hard work and advancing social justice inspires our graduates as they enter their chosen fields as socially responsible practitioners. So. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and the administration of Adler University, 
Adler University. I extend to you our appreciation and recognition on your ongoing commitment to advancing social justice. On this day, the eighth day of October, by the authority vested in me as the president of Adler University, I bestow upon you the honorary degree of Doctorate of Humane Letters. Thank you, Ninu, and thank you, Ray. And now, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our graduates. Will all the master's degree candidates please stand? Families and guests, I present to you the candidates for the master's degrees. Dr. Crossman, will you declare these students graduates of Adler University? Indeed, I will. <clears throat> On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and the administrators of Adler University, I extend to you our congratulations on completing the requirements for the Master's or Master of Arts degree in Public Policy and Administration, Industrial and Organizational Psychology, Counseling Psychology, and Counseling Psychology Art Therapy awarded to you this 8th day of October 2022. And by the authority invested in me as the President of Adler University, I bestow on you the degree of Master or Master of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities inherent therein. Graduates, please be seated. Thank you, Ray. Uh, before presenting our graduates with these degrees, a quick note that certainly we want to respect personal preferences. Some of you may prefer fist bumps to handshakes and hugs or nothing as you cross the stage after being hooded. The presentation of graduates will start with those from the Master of Public Policy and Administration program, uh, whose names will be read by Dr. Sandra Song. Dr. Sean Ireland will then announce the names of the industrial and organizational psychology graduates, followed by Dr. Katura Welton, who will present the Master of Counseling Psychology Art Therapy program grads. And then finally, Dr. Asa Malio will announce the Master of Counseling Psychology, Master of Counseling Psychology School and Youth, Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology, and Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology School of Youth graduates. Dr. Song. Master of Public Policy and Administration, Concentration in Social Change Leadership. Diksha. Gita. Carla Beatriz Acevito Arbizu. Asan Ahmed. Sandra Almeida.
Anne Lucy Bélanger. Rebecca Hannah Benet. Amandeep Singh Brar. <laughs> Hardeep Kaur. Athena Estramadura. Afsun Javanju. Jobampreet Kaur. Shaheen Kak Nazar. Mohammed Faizula Khan. <laughs> Mona Kazae. <laughs> Harleen Kaur Mangat. Hani Mukaram Zara Nika. Samaye Rase Luye I'd like to um, very proudly welcome the Master in Industrial and Organizational Psychology graduates. M Maria Hudaharjan. Fatima Derga. <laughs> and Hani Fatima Mukhtar. Master of Counseling, Psychology, Art, Therapy. Priscilla Armoral.
Newell Donna Dan. Faranak Gorbani. Prudence Eliza Reed Go. Mac E. May. Aaron Kathleen Miller Schumann. Kar Ying <laughs> Sami Paju <laughs> Lauren Emily Arponita Smart. Chan Chi Cherry Song <laughs> Alexia Marie Wilm And now I'd like to welcome the students graduating from the Masters of Arts in Counseling Psychology. Miriam Dada. Mercedes Verbeen Miller. Nicholas James Stimson. <laughs> now I would like to welcome to the stage the graduates of the Masters of Counseling Psychology School and Youth Concentration. Miriam Adipur. Zandria Gemini Cumby. <laughs> Flavia Gomez Sylvie Hira. <laughs> Emily Nicole Holzman. John Jonathan David Jung. <laughs> Pawandeep Kaur. Tina Louise Koneski. <laughs> Elizabeth Alessandra Medina Calderon. <laughs> the 
Deepti Sani. Kira Weinstein. Now I'd like to welcome the students graduating from the Masters of Counseling Psychology to the stage. Diana, De oh, sorry, Dana Beck. Megan Danielle Black. <laughs> Serena Lynn Boldhort. <laughs> Marie Faith Ann Boucher. Arvine Boyle. <laughs> Melissa Brienza. <laughs> Kaylee Lauren Brown. Jesse Chen. <laughs> Shelley Ray Klaus. Robin Curry. Raman Preet Kaur Dhaliwal. <laughs> Sarim Kaur Dillon. <laughs> Amrita Dut. Melanie Grace Fernandez. <laughs> Shanan Gill. <laughs> Hi Ha. Megan Elizabeth Hodgson. <laughs> Nikki Hallinson. <laughs> Sonia Charmaine Hoogie. Hazel Heather Hughes. <laughs> Namita Candola. <laughs> Ainsley Kensel. Chelsea Kirkpatrick. Woo! 
Marla Langan. Chelsea Rose Lichensteiger. Kira McKenzie. Hassan Mahwani. Nigel Mojica. Alexandra Rona Montoya. Courtney Orser. Justin Daniel Paulson. Tanis Christina Price. Sarah Koff. Bethany Roker. <laughs> Natasha Marie Roop. <laughs> Priya Preet Kaur Sangra. Apekcha Sapkota. Roz Sayani. Wenji Shen. Rebecca Lynn Jean Schuen. Joey Tem. Natalie Chohanko. Dagan Walters. Kelsey Ann Webster. Emily Wilson George. Finally, Deborah Winters.
So my congratulations to our newly minted master's degree graduates. And now it's time for our doctorate students. So would at this time, will all doctoral degree candidates please stand? Families and guests, I present to you the candidates for doctoral degrees, and Dr. Crossman, will you declare these students graduates of Adler University? On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and the administration of Adler University, I extend to you our congratulations upon completing the requirements for the Doctor of Psychology, Clinical Psychology, and Doctor of Philosophy, Industrial and Organizational Psychology degrees awarded on this eighth day of October 2022. By the authority vested in me as the president of Adler University, I bestow on you your doctoral degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities inherent therein. And graduates, now please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Crossman. And now I invite Dr. Manal Gerges Younger to come forward to announce our doctoral candidates. I present to you the graduates of the Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology program, Angela Fu. <laughs> Jasmine Nushir Irani. Natasha Karim Maji. <laughs> Veronica Diane Lee. <laughs> Leslie Loomis Zenet. Victor Mack. <laughs> Susan Wright. <laughs> Sharia Sara Saidi. The graduate of the Doctor of Philosophy in Industrial and Organizational Psychology, Olivia Robertson. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, our uh, newly minted doctoral degrees, and at this time, I would like all of our graduates to please stand. Yes, you finally made it. Congratulations. Now, a little bit of tradition. A little bit of tradition here. We want you to turn your tassel. So turning the tassel on your regalia from right to left signifies the completion of this part of your graduate education. 
So you may now move your tassels from right to left. Excellent job. Now graduates, please turn around and face the audience. And family and guests, I now present to you the Adler University graduating class of 2022. Thank you, and please be seated. And now back to President Crossman. As everyone here knows, no one completes graduate school alone. When you go to graduate school, your family and your friends and your community go to school with you. This is a day both for our graduates and their supporting communities. So right now, I'd like to ask, please, the spouses and partners of the graduates to stand now and be recognized. Awesome, well done. I'd like to now ask the children who supported the graduates, the kids of the graduates, to stand now and be recognized. The parents of the graduates, please stand now and be recognized. It's your day too. And your siblings, your brothers, your sisters, your grandparents, your aunties, your uncles, stand now and be recognized, family members. And Lord knows, when you go to graduate school, you drag your friends to graduate school with you too, right? Friends of the graduates, stand now and be recognized. Sweet. Uh, yes, it is this community's day. They're all community of Adlerians. But now, I'd like a brief word with the graduates, please, before we depart. I'm so proud of you. Um, you have achieved so much. Um, as Nigel said, you've constructed a new person across the course of this degree. You know, we helped some, but you made that new person happen. As Ninu said, you've been getting in touch with your why, why you're doing this across the course of the program, and you're gonna keep on staying in touch with that. And as you disperse to do work at the roots of what causes injustice in the world, you'll stay in touch with that why. Across your time with us, you've worked together, you've worked with the faculty here, you've worked with communities on so many projects, so many endeavors. Um, out in communities, the class of 2022 has completed over 120,000 direct service hours during their time in the program, serving over eight, almost 8,000 people. Yeah, that is a big piece of work. Vancouver wouldn't be able to run without you, and you're, without the work that you just did, and you're just getting started, right? just getting started. Across your years here at Adler University, you've heard and you've experienced a good deal about what we believe it means to continue the work of Alfred Adler, who revolutionized how we approach wellness and society. 
Now as Adler University graduates, it's up to you to decide what it means to continue the work of Alfred Adler. You know, and you know how to apply the foundational work of Adler. You know Gemeinschaftsgefühl. You know how to say Gemeinschaftsgefühl, right? <laughs> Social interest. As a way to explain people, uh, to guide work with people, and to describe our responsibility to each other within communities. You know how to assess situations from multiple perspectives and how to find solutions in far-ranging, innovative, and results-oriented ways. Across your professional lives, you will serve in many ways as practitioners, as facilitators, as administrators, as managers, as educators. And in all of those endeavors, you will be leaders. Because as Adlerians, you bring specific and exceptional knowledge, values, and skills. You bring a unique perspective and approach. You bring game, you bring leadership to the people and to the families and to the communities that you serve and support. And as you know, there's absolutely no shortage of challenges facing our communities. I believe you are up to the challenge. I and all of us here at the university expect and know that you'll make us proud as you continue the important work of engaging communities and advancing social justice. And as you do, let us know, please, your path and your successes. Let us know the triumphs and the struggles within your experiences and your work. Stay connected with us. To return to the university for professional tune-ups, for education, for fun and celebration, and for support. I, along with everyone here at the university, cannot wait to hear how you're going to continue the work of Alfred Adler. Welcome to the community of Adler University graduates, and congratulations to you on your achievements. Thank you, Ray, and congratulations once again to all of our graduates, and thank you to the rest of you for attending today's ceremony. I would also like to thank our graduate speaker, Nigel Mojica. And our commencement speaker, Ninu Kang. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize a very special person who has worked very, very hard behind the scenes to make this afternoon possible. Suzanne Milner, Director of Student, <laughs> Student Services, deserves a big round of applause. She has worked tirelessly behind the scenes these past several weeks to make commencement possible, along with an organizing committee uh, who's, uh, which is composed of Kyle McClellan, Colin Osaka, and Melody Sosa, along with a whole host of event volunteers. And I really, really uh, want to thank all of you for your work today. Thank you. <clears throat> Graduates, faculty, guests, platform party, please rise for the recessional. And congratulations once again to the class of 2022, and I now declare today's commencement closed.